Well, welcome everybody. Oh, we've got a great conversation. My friend, my holy brother, Randy Kaiser and I are going to come and talk about whatever flows and knowing Randy is going to be a it's going to include God, it's going to include love, and it's, uh, we already talked earlier that it's probably going to include Jesus. So Randy, so good to see you again, brother. Oh, good to see you too, Lina. And it's, yeah, it must be just about a year since we had our first chat together, wasn't it, I think? It was. It was over a year that we had our first chat, and, and I've been following you, and, and I love what you're up to, and I absolutely so resonate with your heart for humanity, your desire that human beings return to the truth uh, that's already inside of us. You know, God created us sovereign. God created us free. And, you know, Jesus came to give us that message. And, and as a holy brother, he was here to let us know that freedom is our birthright. And um, I love what you are all about, which is even though you you share teach about so many other things so much about you know the financial system it's an area of expertise for you you still bring god to all of your life and i love that and admire your willingness to be that that transparent about your love of god oh thank you and i mean yeah we're friends on facebook so i see your posts a lot too and it's you know very common interest in that basic uh realm of of godliness you know like what it what it is to me and you know we're not going to have an interview here folks this is going to be a chat i want to hear a lot of linus stuff too because she's just got such a beautiful mind and it's it's just one of those things where we can come together in a simple story okay like there's lots of lots of stories out there from spaceships to galactic beings and everything and we're not running down any of that stuff that's all beautiful, imaginative stuff and creative. The simplicity of the, the story of Jesus Christ resonates with me, okay? That's, that's what I get to, you know? Like I've studied some Lao Tse and some Buddha and some Muhammad, and I know their stories, and they're actually quite similar stories of enlightened human beings that, you know, find this simple truth that, you know, I feel as if I found more from the Jesus Christ story than anything. And you know, a living man that walked on this earth and taught so much. And you can't deny that he had an effect on billions and billions of people because, you know, it's, it, and we're going to, you know, get into some of our opinions on what that is. But my God, most of the world still thinks we live in the year 2021. Why is that? Because it's related to Jesus Christ story, you know, like, we celebrate Christmas. It's related to Jesus Christ story. There's so many things that, that that one man was able to accomplish by telling some stories and, and bringing the truth, the bitter, simple, sweet truth to us, you know, that we are godly beings and that we, you know, join together and, man, we got power, <laughs> you know? I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, my, my awakening began um, when my mom passed away and her passing activated a fear in me that I had no idea was there. And this was in 2002. So almost 20 years ago. And that fear of death, because I grew up Catholic was a fear of going to hell. And that that fear, that terror of going to hell had me begin to study how the heck did, did, did this happen? Why, why am I going to hell? Why does the Bible teach that I'm going to go to hell? And I began, you know, I had a friend who gave me a book about a woman who had a near death experience. And like me, she had been Catholic. She had had a lot of, you know, terror in her life. So she was petrified of hell um, because she had done things that she thought were going to be punished as I had. And in her near death experience, she encounters God who says, you know, there's not, there's no such thing as hell. There's only love and light. So that helped me realize, stop being so afraid of death. And then the same friend gave me a book about past life experiences. This is a book written by Dr. Brian Weiss called many masters, many lives. And I began to realize, well, if I've been here a whole bunch of times and there is no such thing as hell and death, you know, being final, I realized that we are, we operate in a circle. 
which means we must be eternal. There's no end. And that began my journey of unraveling. How did I get indoctrinated into believing in death in, in uh, hell? And that sent me into a journey to get to know Jesus. And not only did it lead me to understand how the Catholic church was formed and go down all the rabbit holes about Catholicism and the Council of Nicaea and why certain books were chosen to be in the Bible and others were left out. But I began to have experiences, conversations, connections, not conversations that I heard an, a voice talking to me as if it was outside of me, but an activation of knowingness within me that were for me, it felt like my holy brother, Jesus, our holy brother, Jesus, that consciousness was letting me know of our oneness. And boy, did that send me down a lot of rabbit holes because it totally dis dismantled for me the idea of organized religion as, as you know, the Pope being the only one at the top and everything that religion has done to hurt others in the name of God was completely, that was gone. And all that I was left with a love for humanity in oneness. So I want to hear about how you came to, to get to <laughs> connect with Jesus and have that passion that you have. Yeah. Well, you know, as a child, I grew up Roman Catholic, you know, and learned the old Testament and how to obey the priests. And they were the only way to heaven and all that crap like you say and and you know for years i i uh i'll keep it pretty short i basically had a uh what they call a hemangioma extra massive blood vessels on my on my behind on my butt and that caused me horrible pain all through my childhood and i'd have nightmares and dreams when i'd rupture it and it would you know it was just a terrible thing but i um i lived through that and it, a lot of the dreams and nightmares I'd be dreaming and, you know, our, our imagination is recollection or is memory, you know. So I'd remember the pictures of Jesus Christ at the church and I'd wake up in these dreams and here's, uh, here's um, Jesus Christ holding his hand out saying, it's okay, just, just come with me, you know. So it was always so comforting then. But then I had a had one of those death experiences i had that thing removed and and uh in the process i'll just to keep it short i bled to death and overnight i i uh they had an iv plugged into me and that was enough to keep me going but the blood in the wound from this massive operation basically just accumulated in under my skin they undid the iv i went to the bathroom and i collapsed on the floor and then when i woke up i was on the or I didn't wake up for a while yet here. I got to tell you the story. So then I'm on the bed and the, and I was already, you know, unconscious, but conscious at the same time. I don't know how else to explain that. Like I couldn't see or feel, but I could, or see or, you know, physically feel, but I could still comprehend what was going on. My brain was working and the blood, according to them, bust open and all the blood ran out on the floor and the, you know, from my wound. And then after that, they figured out, well, holy shit, plug the IV back into him. So that's what brought me back to life again, you know, the intravenous. But during that time, all I can think of, I never had what people talk about floating and things like that. I never had that experience. But all I could think of was, well, this is easy. This is painless. It's like, this is very comfortable, you know, like that was what my mind was doing. I had thoughts my brain raced a little bit but the main thought that I remember from that was this isn't that bad you know so I think that was the time that I really started to change my life and I wouldn't say I've followed Jesus to a point of you know really reading scripture and stuff but I really wanted to discover something more about this man and and uh you know we're going to tell some stories but now it's your turn because <laughs> I want to I want to share as much as I want to uh, tell, you know, like this is what it's about is giving and receiving. If we realize the, the beautiful uh, forgiving, F-O-R-E, giving story of Jesus Christ, which is just a beautiful thing. And then, of course, there's forgiveness in his words and compassion as well. But 
you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about that on the monetary side later, but I don't want to rattle on too long. So over to you, my dear. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I love that. Wow. So at a very young age, you had that experience that allowed you to, to know there's more, there, there's just more. And um, I, I would have to say that when I began to cultivate that, this relationship with this consciousness that is Jesus, and it began to, to guide me, it, it was telling me, leading me to the right book at the right time. Synchronicity was just absolutely running my life. And I began to discover um, books, you know, like this, giving and receiving people who wrote their experiences were giving to me the gift of more clarity. And as you said, I realized that I wasn't learning anything new. It was just an activation of memory, that that knowingness that is inside of all of us, I realized had just been blocked, overlaid with beliefs that were um, kind of like, like a veil, separating me from the truth of who I was. And all of these different books were just giving me, brothers and sisters giving me information that activated that remembering of my own truth. So every aha was an opportunity for me to really remember uh, ancient truth that is who we are and has always been there. And I, I was guided to, to read books that were re written about Jesus that were totally completely opposite of what the Bible said about Jesus. And it blew me away when I began to realize that this, this one man that billions of people follow, that supposedly the Pope is in charge of the church to give us the teachings of Jesus so that we can come to be saved. What, all that stuff, not only was it made up, but it wasn't giving us what Jesus really wanted us to know. That began to have me question everything else that I believed what I believed about medicine, what I believed about government, what I believed about the education system, about parenting, about banking, about everything, because something in me got activated that if those in power could deceive me by keeping me from knowing that I, I and the father are one, that I am the holy daughter of, of God, Jesus is not the only son. If I had been deceived in the realm of religion, then I clearly must have been deceived in all other realms because all other realms had elements of fear. And when I was learning about Jesus, it was very clear. If you know the truth of who you are, you always operate from love. And in all the other realms, in money, I was always afraid. In relationships, I was always afraid. And in, in school, I was always afraid I wasn't getting educated enough or had enough letters after my name. In medicine, I was always afraid I was going to get sick. I realized, well, if there's fear in those things, those are not, they're not, they don't have God in them. They don't have Jesus in them. And that was so, oh my God, I went down a lot of rabbit holes, as you can only imagine. <laughs> But let me stop there. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I mean, we, we'll keep it going. Like, we'll just keep trading back and forth, play a little tennis here today. Because that's, <laughs> that's what it's about. You're feeding thoughts in my mind and it's coming to me. So first off, I'd like to talk, you know, you, you mentioned all of the other fields. Okay. So the one that really intrigues me, obviously, is always the natural aspect of Jesus Christ. You know, like the man was so natural right and talked about things in that way so divine natural activation dna was something that somebody showed me and i thought oh my god that's just beautiful you know because it just it wraps it all together in some really you know simple words for my mind to just say you know why the hell do i need a pope or a priest or a rabbi between me and god i don't it's divine natural activation. You can activate and connect, right, with God, source energy, whatever you want to call it. I like to use the word God. And Jesus Christ taught, taught us that. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, again, I'm going to go a little bit into that again with lump letters and names. And this is in the Bible stuff too, you know, but uh, talking about how 
Jesus forgave us our sins. Well, what is our sin? Our sin is to give away our consent, to give away our direct neural natural activation to God. And then they throw it in our face with things like a SS number, you know? What is an SS? It's like the, the uh, Nazi military, you know, like that's your number. Now you're, you work for the government because you're a, you're a Nazi soldier for a Nazi government. Really? You know, or in Canada, it's social insurance number. It's even, it's that simple, S-I-N. You know, so we're giving away our consent to these organizations that lie to us, you know, and continue to lie to us daily. And it's, you know, all kinds of little secrets like the birth certificate, you know, giving away our consent so that they can manifest money. It's all about manifesting, not about creation creation is bringing god into the mix like alchemy brings love into the mix love being the manifestation of god in our reality in my words you know like i like to play with all these words and stuff and and um yeah i got some more stuff but i, I want to just keep sharing so if there's something there or you want to add some more i love this conversation <laughs> and thank you so much oh no my goodness i'm loving it too uh, yeah and here in the u.s we've got the ssn social security number and it and what is so fascinating about that is it talks about social security so we're only secure in a social system that is designed to literally it, it basically enslave us i was actually just finished doing a, a lesson that I'm going to be offering on my YouTube channel. I put all kinds of free lessons on my YouTube channel. They get inspired in me and I have to share them because they are for giving them away. And it's about understanding the difference between safety and sovereignty. If we seek safety, security, especially from, any, well, not especially, from anything external, we are never going to find our sovereignty because our sovereignty states that our, our freedom, our safety is because we're aligned with God. My favorite teachings that I, that I have found that I teach from, again, guided by Jesus, channeled by Jesus, A Course in Miracles, says that our safety is only because we exist inside of God. And we've been trained through programming like social security numbers to believe that our security comes from the social establishment establishment outside of us, just as religion told us that we're only saved by going to the church that lets us know if we've been good or bad like Santa Claus. And if we give them a lot of money, then they'll give us, you know, endow us with security, with safety, with maybe you won't go to God or to hell if um, we let you come to God. So yes, it, it's, it's insane, but I, I want to just touch on what you said. I have heard that before a long time ago, but it just really clicked when you mentioned it, the DNA, that divine natural activation, that's what awakening is all about, is reclaiming our DNA back to my realizing that the whole medical system is about blocking our, our, our connection to all activation of all that is in in our dna that's why they make our bodies sick um so let me stop there and throw the tennis ball back to you by the way i'm a tennis player so i do love the the pace and um the back and forth but every now and then i may have to do a lob <laughs> <laughs> beautiful yeah let's touch on that uh on that contamination of the of the mind for a minute you know like 49 days into the the creation of a fetus okay 49 days from the moment the 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 sperm hits the egg and the and the cells start dividing is when two things happen okay that's when the pineal gland is formed and that's also when the genetic or gender is chosen like the female or the male also another thing that i learned last week about the 49 days was to do with what you mentioned earlier we keep coming around it's a reincarnation of that holy spirit the spirit being connected directly to us through that pineal gland or that third eye connection when we sit and meditate meditation being listening to god prayer being talking with god not asking god for something just saying look at how you doing 
you know, like we're all good on, down here as long as I trust you and love you. I know everything's fine. So yeah, I do want this, you know, and I do want that. And we can continue to, to pray that way, but it's not in a place of begging. It's in a place of knowing, you know, that what I ask God for, God is going to produce and give to me, you know, and it's, and it's that goodness in everyone and everything around me that brings that into fruition. You know, it's not as if, you know, the little kid asks God for a bike and then God gives it to him. His parents likely give it to him, but the God and the goodness in all of those, uh, you know, other entities is what combines to, to get what he wanted that child. Right. But you know, the, the contamination of that pineal gland has been a, is, is to try, try, I'm not saying there's any control, it's just still an attempt by certain people to try and keep us dense, and dense being the word, because I think in terms of density versus lightness, you know, a lot of people will talk about the light being a white light, but I think of it as vibration and frequency or energy a lot too, and then if you think in terms of lightness versus heavy, well, if you put metals in your body, you're going to be heavier, you know, it's, and it contaminates our system. So there's, so the idea that the current situation that we have on our hands is doing that, well, it's been happening for years through our food supply, through our aerosols and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not saying there's a genocide going on or anything, but there's definitely an attempt to keep us dumbed down and dense, you know, <laughs> like, so, um, there was one other one that I'll add, then it's back to you. But I, you know, on the side of the SSN and the and the consent to these governments, you know, we went in the banking system from some asset-backed banking, you know, of thousands, if not millions, of years of mining. And I'm talking about the physical now instead of the mine, 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 which is in my mind, it's such a coincidence, really, you know, that we talk about mining and mine. But the mining of gold and silver and platinum and bronze, and as if any of that has left the planet. No, it hasn't. It's all stashed and stored away in places. Governments don't have their hands on it. It's in private hands. And, you know, we switched away from that into this birth certificate, social insurance, social security numbers and stuff like that, and went right into this idea of manifesting credit, money, currency, whatever you want to call it, via the autograph, AU, authorized by you, the AU, the authentic one, the AU, and agreements, AG. So a little bit of mind games, you know, to add in the idea that, oh, it's silver, and, it was silver and gold, but now it's silver and gold again, you know, because you're the gold AU and you're the silver because you agreed or consented. I mean, just little games like that. That's what makes me laugh at you know, the banking system when I get in there and you know me, I'm a little bit raw sometimes and cussing and swearing when, when I get talking about these goofballs that created, manifested this, sorry, didn't create, manifested this system. And I don't have any time for them. Like when I talk directly to them, they run away from me because I'm not going to put up with that crap, you know, like, so back to you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I receive it. My turn. Ah, well, it's, it's really uh, what we're talking about here. If, if anybody's listening to this, it's clearly we have decades of unpacking the illusion of that, that we're not divine, that we're not aligned with God, that we're not part of, of you know, that, that plan that gives us total sovereignty because we've been activating our, our divinity for quite a while our natural divinity, which is, which is all of ours. And you, you have been able to, to really see what has happened in the, in the financial business, where for me, I kind of got, um, it's almost like I got funneled into a very, very uh, specific way of unraveling the illusion, which was to understand the thought systems that we have and to, to recognize that we really have only two voices in our head, the voice of God. And what the Course in Miracles teaches is the voice of the ego. And the ego is nothing more than all the programming that we have received that blocks the truth of who we are. 
So it's, it's just thoughts. It's just a whole bunch of thoughts. Ego is nothing more than, than the thoughts that help edge God out. So as you were sharing, we have been indoctrinating, indoctrinated for thousands of years by those who began to value money, value gold, value this, that, or the other. And in the valuing of the things of matter, they stop valuing what really, truly, ultimately matters more than anything, which is our divinity. And in, in the getting um, confused that the physical is what matters, we totally, completely stop connecting with what is energy, which is why Einstein told us energy equals MC squared. Energy equals the matter that we see. When you don't know that you're energy, you think you're just physical matter. And now the only things that matter are the stuff that you can buy at the store. All that, that physical stuff becomes the thing that you're conditioned to believe has value. And when your mind is totally, completely deactivated from its natural divine knowingness that what we are is eternal energy, we, we become enslaved to the physicality. We become enslaved to the physical matter and that becomes what we value that becomes what matters which is how we've been enslaved into being hamsters on this hamster wheel chasing money buying stuff buying more buying more and the matter became what mattered more more than anything and of course once you believe that you're you are your stuff your self-worth becomes your net worth and if your net worth isn't a, at the place where they tell you is what really matters for you to be somebody, you know, it used to be, you wanted to, to have a um, three figure income and four figure income. And then it was the six figure income when I was younger. And now it's, you know, you, what only six figures, you got to go to the higher figures. So we have been chasing our self worth through our net worth, chasing things that are made of matter but when you begin to activate your DNA, none of that matters because you come back to the source, like you were saying, of creation, not manifestation. Because what, what is man-made, it will never make us happy of anything that enslaves us. But what really matters is coming in to activating your own DNA, at remembering the truth of who you are. That's why I love what you said, divine natural activation when we allow that process to take place, we get to play with all the matter on the planet. We get to play with all this stuff because we're no longer defined by it. And if you're not defined by something, you're not confined by it. And when humanity frees itself of these attachments to this illusion that matter is ultimately what matters more than anything, we will free ourselves from the enslavement of chasing, seeking, continually being in a state of not enoughness because they keep raising the bar of what's good. You know, you'll never be able to find your self-worth in your net worth. It's just never going to happen. That's why there, nobody can tell you, oh, $5 million is when you're happy or $5 billion is when you're happy. These people that are running the world, they're not happy and they've got billions, some of them trillions of dollars. They're still not happy that they need to seek more control from those that they think are their minions, but they have dominion over the minions because the minions have been woken up. You and I are waking up. You and I realize, you know, I'm okay. Just like Jesus, I'm not this body. I have zero fear of death. I, I have absolutely no fear of uh, an authority figure over me. Those things I've faced and I've let go and I've, I've, renewed my mind. So in my little field is all about understanding what the Buddha taught, understanding what in the Bible, and I don't quote too many things, but in Romans, there is, there is the most, to me, one of the most profound um, teachings, and that is, and you shall be transformed through the renewing of your mind. The Course in Miracles is a course in mind training. So I've been renewing my mind because I'm training myself to know the distinction between those two thought systems, the thought system that aligns me with God's energy and the thought system that aligns me with the, the human physical matter, egoic programming. 
And once you can see those two thought systems, you just pick the one. You pick the one <laughs> and the other one dissolves. And now with that, I'll, you know, toss that ball back to you in your court now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And that, that was a long volley. I actually I had know, a moment I'm sorry. To, no, 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 no. <laughs> listen, I had a moment to take a note. That's all I was take, getting to with that volley thing. Like if we were actually playing tennis, I wouldn't have had time for that. But I had time to make a note. Because the thought thing is so interesting. And this will bring it back in my mind a little bit back to Jesus Christ again. Okay. Because I believe that Jesus Christ in the Middle East spoke the Aramaic language as well as Hebrew. And uh, Aramaic language, the, uh, the word Satan, which so many people get lost on that track, is in Aramaic only means crazy thoughts. You know, it's amazing. Uh, Michael Beckwith, he's a spiritual teacher down in the U.S. You may, you've heard of him? Yeah. He, uh, he shared that with me years ago. I was listening to one of his videos, and not personally, but, you know, and he said that, and it was like, of course, you know. So then to say that there is one cabal or there is one group of New World Order or anything like that, no, there's not. There's crazy thoughts in every human's mind. Every single one of us has, has Satan in us and God. And we can choose one or the other, you know. God being the good thoughts and Satan being the crazy thoughts. It can, I like to boil it down to that simplicity for people because otherwise, man, we can get gone off on tangential thinking, as we call it, and, and just get stories wrapped up one after another. My goodness. That's why I love the simplicity of Jesus Christ. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, one of the banking uh, people that I deal with. Okay. He's a Middle Eastern born man, lives in the U.S. now, and he speaks Aramaic and he and his lineage and his family story is just, just amazing. You know, like he's, He's a Christian-based man from, from the Middle East, like I say. And, you know, he has love and compassion for Muslims as well. Don't get me wrong. We're not talking about any division here. It's just that his story resonated with mine because of the, you know, Jesus Christ connection that we had and the, the beauty of that man. So we're talking a couple of days ago, and we were on for over an hour, and he oftentimes he'll he'll say to me, can we pray together? And the other day he did, and he prayed in Aramaic. Like, I didn't understand a word he was saying, but he, he rattled on in Aramaic language. And I was like, wow, you know, it felt good. It was like, you know, kind. And he, the way he spoke it and stuff, he had that kind of, I call it lower Sanskrit and self higher Sanskrit, like, a, and that's kind of going off on a tangent. But if you, Sanskrit language is, is basically just kind of, uh, what do people call it? Uh, channeling or, or tongues, you know, when you speak in tongues. So it's like versus higher Sanskrit, which is more, you know, kind of harsher. So when I listened to him speak in Aramaic, he was using that lower tone, that kind lovingness that would came out. So it was like, didn't matter what he was saying. I could just feel it, you know, it was feeling good. So I, I got off the phone with him and he communicates with very many of the royal families, the true royal families of earth, not the queen of England, who is just a, a Bauer Rothschild relative. And I'm not saying she's not royal or she's not, you know, she's a devil or anything like some people want to go on about it, and that's up to them. But I am saying that there are true royal families that I believe now we're going to get into some of my belief systems here, are related to Jesus Christ who actually had children. And whether he had those prior to his resurrection, or if him and Mary went off afterwards and had children, I don't know, but I believe that Jesus Christ had children. And those, and over the thousands, couple thousand or maybe less, who knows what numbers are on history anymore, because that's been all lied to us as well. If it's... If he's been 2,000 years gone, okay. Has, is he dead even? I don't know. Like There's some question there too. But a man named, I wrote this down because I wanted to share with some people, a man named Simcha 
Jacob Bavinsky. Have you ever heard that name? He's a he's a Jewish man, but he he uh, puts out some videos and stuff, and we'll put the link to his name at the very least on the video. And he he discovered some stuff. This man that about the Exodus and did a film on the Exodus that just blew me away. It was beautiful. And then he was talking about this gospel that he found and they've, you know, redone it and done a lot of work on it that talks from the Mary Magdalene story of marriage and children. And it's beautiful. And it matches up with something else that Fiona McLaren is another lady that I wanted to mention. And she has a picture that's Da Vinci's last commission. Okay. And I don't know if Da Vinci himself painted it or if he commissioned it and actually participated in the in the creation of this painting but it's a pair, picture of mary magdalene with a baby on her lap as well so there's all these little beautiful stories that i came into in my discovery and on my path that i wanted to share and and there's a couple of them for you my dear so back to you <laughs> oh wow that is so cool well let me go back to what you said in the beginning the, about the word Satan being nothing but crazy thoughts. I completely, I mean, I've heard that. Um, oh, I can't remember. I went to a, a class by a, a very pretty well-known Aramaic teacher, uh, Rocco Erico, and he teaches a lot. He, tr he helped me understand the Lord's Prayer. In the Aramaic, the Lord's Prayer is quite different not horribly different, maybe just a little slightly different, but slightly enough that we have lost some of the meaning of it in, in the English tran translations. But back to the crazy thoughts, the Course in Miracles says that the ego is a crazy mad idea and the ego is nothing more than the, the same evil thoughts, the same, um, we miss the mark, which the word sin in Aramaic is an archery term to miss the mark. So when we sin, we miss the mark. So we are not literally operating in, in the direct path of love. We miss the mark. We, you know, we shoot off to a little bit of jealousy or a little bit of greed or a little bit of doubt or a little bit of you know, confusion. So we miss the mark. We don't hit the bullseye. So the crazy thoughts are those those thoughts that have us bouncing back and forth and confuse our, our mind and have us not be walking the middle way, the, the path of love. So I would definitely love to connect with, you know, for you to put those two links for those two people, because if there is something that I have come to realize about this journey, thanks a lot to A Course in Miracles and thanks to the guidance that I received directly but also I've, I have come upon many other books that share information about Jesus's life. There is so much that we do not know in traditional teachings that we have to find um, by other means. And the gospel of Mary, you know, one of those, those gospels discovered in, whether it was in the, the Dead Sea Scrolls or the Nag Hammadi gospels that were discovered in, you know, the 1940s in Egypt, there is so much information about the man named Jesus and Mary, the woman named Mary, that we do not know about. And I, I can tell you, everything that I've read about them leads us, le led me to understand one thing and one thing only. If we knew that we are descendants of that lineage, because we all are descendants of the same lineage, ultimately, we're all children of God. There's only one creator. So if we knew the power that we each have, absolutely, it's just part of our beingness. If we knew how powerful we are, we could not be controlled. And those who understood enough about power, but not about love, became lovers of power and began to disempower humanity systematically, we have been disempowered by the lovers of power. And it is our job to reconnect with love so that we can empower ourselves again. And we have to study about Mary, we have to study about Jesus, because they're all teachings that remind us how to renew our mind, how to get out of the, the suppression 
of disinformation so that we can express the truth of our divine nature, which is the activation of our DNA um, through all of that. So I can't wait to connect with anybody, like you were saying, Simcha and Fiona, anybody that helps us remember, uh, activate truth. That, that's so crucial. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? And I mean, you know, we've we've been fed and the past is all an illusion, just like, you know, most of the stuff that we live, that we see around us, right? And that illusion was deliberately, deliberately taken, you know, and destroyed, like, you know, and then and then manipulated, right? So like the world wars and stuff like that, we're we're mostly about stealing gold and moving borders around and stuff, but destruction of art and destruction of any kind of form of history that would, you know, lead to more truth. That's it's just constantly going on even today, you know, censorship and destruction of of beautiful history. So I think that personally, you know, the Roman Empire that where you know Pontius Pilate was supposed to be the guy that you know said put him to put him on the cross or whatever I think it just dissolved I don't think there was and I think that there was actually a golden age for hundreds of years and Jesus Christ led that golden age with peace and love showed people how to just create you know and to be creative amongst themselves and there was technological advances that we don't even have now i've just i've looked into some you know kind of films and stuff like that that talk along those lines and i'm just of course that's the truth we're not we're mankind we're not man mean we're not we don't want to kill each other that's bullshit and and to say that we did that you know without manipulation and coercion we didn't do that without manipulation and coercion. It was all coercion. It was all somebody giving orders to somebody and telling them. But the soul, the beautiful part of this, and we're probably getting close. I don't like to go much over an hour line. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the good news of what's happening here now. And that is how many beautiful people are awakening. And, you know, I, I, I'll get a little frustrated and with the, the, the speed at which things are going, but I know it, I have to be patient there. But one thing I do know is that from my banking experience, knowing that a lot of these accounts that are held off ledger are in platforms that are uh, seen over by military, old military generals and stuff, because they were truly ones that they could trust to hold, you know, the keeper gatekeeper role and not you know not no messing around because they were able to take those kind of orders right and those people are are conscious you know these generals that i'm running into and i believe that the generals in the militaries of the world are also saying enough is enough we're not your dogs of war we're not your puppets we're not here to you know, manipulate and exploit to steal gold and steal oil. You know, the Middle East wars have been all about that and the and the drugs and everything else. It's not about Muslims fighting Christians, not such garbage. You know, so people have, have slowly but almost quickly lately realized that and that we are in the midst of a huge change. And these banking families that were at the lower end that were using that system of the autographs and agreements are scared shitless. They don't know what to do. The upper families are trying to say, well, wait a minute, you know, it's not our fault. And we're saying to them, get out of the way too. We're, we're, we're wanting to get access to these Royal families again with the assets. And we're going to use that. You could have used the autographs and agreements in a manner where you handed out sovereignty certificates to the human being rather than a fake birth certificate and lied to them and then went to the people and say it in the nation okay what do you think how much money should we create should we look after the basic sorry not the basic the comfort of every human being because that social aspect comes into the national conversation 
and did it like that. They had the opportunity to do that, but they didn't. They just kept lying to the people and, and you know, oh, we're handing out the money and everything. Well, who's the creditors of that money? Be honest. It's the people on the land in a social structure like that. It's not created any other way. It's, it's based on their consent. So they had their opportunity and they blew it. So we're at that point now where these historic assets are going to come back to back projects and hopefully the people wake up enough to republic republic and get a new system in place a renewed system because we did have a republic in the united states with a beautiful divinely created i believe constitution so once we get that stuff settled then this whole these whole ideas of capitalism versus communism China virus. Get that out of your head. There's no China virus. That, that was more stuff to get you fighting and get you drawn into that legal jurisdiction of good and bad. We're on our way, folks. And we're and it's because of this awakening into that Christed light, that consciousness that Jesus Christ taught us, and that we can all learn very simply from each other without going to Bibles, just sharing stories and and loving each other and hitting the ball back to Lina. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that was absolutely wonderful. You know, and and in in all of the teachings about the that I've read about Jesus, especially my favorite ones are the channeled ones, um, because it's it's the message is so pure. I can feel it in my soul. Um, that whole story about Jesus in the temple and overturning the, the money changers tables uh, is consistently true throughout because Jesus was saying humanity has been enslaved to money. We have made that, that stuff matter more than anything. In the beginning, the, the creation of this planet was heaven on earth. It was truly paradise, the Garden of Eden. We traded, everybody was wealthy beyond measure because you can't measure when you recognize true abundance. Abundance is having what you need when you need it. And if you know that that is abundance, when you need an apple, there's an apple tree. When you need a shelter, there's a cave. Um, when you need whatever it is that you need, it was provided in, in the land of, of plenty. So we have created this idea of money, of wealth, of whatever, simply because we have stopped sharing the goodness of this planet. And as you said, mankind, the word kind is there because it's our natural state of being. And those who have made the ego mind, the conditioning, their master, um, I, my heart just has compassion for them because they don't realize that they have, they have put themselves in a corner. They have they're, they're such the minority. There's such few people that really think those evil thoughts that are so against humanity's freedom. To me, those are the most scared people on earth because they're afraid that they know the things that they've done to hurt humanity, the wars that they have maintained, the, the lies that have been propagated, the families who have you know, lost their dad to suicide because the debt was so much that they couldn't handle it. Um, they're, th these are the most afraid people on earth. Humanity is waking up to realize, thank you to the fake pandemic, because it caused a lot of people to experience that quiet time, that however many months in, in fake lockdown, but God uses everything for, for the greater good of all. So no matter what Satan, you know, all Satan's crazy thoughts, God uses everything for sane thoughts. And in the sanity and the quiet, many came to find their sovereignty, or at least to begin to question that somebody else had authority over them. And in that process, we are little by little activating a curiosity that is, that is the awakening. So like you, I'm super excited for what's happening because we are, just as Jesus told us back then, nobody should be controlled by anybody else. God created all of us equal. We are all, as he said, we can do greater works than he did. And he was an amazing healer, but we can't heal ourselves because we've been taught that we got to go to a freaking doctor and go get some crazy jab or go get some poison 
put in our bodies to get better because we have not been activating, as you said earlier, that pineal gland. I didn't know I had a fucking pineal gland. I mean, I know what that was <laughs> until I entered my, my spiritual journey. And then I realized, what? That's a powerful part of me. I had no idea. So yeah, there's so much that needs to get, um, that is being activated, which is activating our remembering, our, 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 our mind is softening the, the, that solidity of the, the fluoride and all that is loosening up and our hearts opening up. So humankind, the kindness is coming back to humanity, but for us to really transcend the illusion of those who think crazy thoughts, we need to start loving them and really bring them into our heart and go, wow, brother, sister, you are so deluded and so confused that you're putting yourself in a really in a corner. I mean, when I think about these people who think that they're the controllers, the numbers are so tiny. They got to be really scared of the billions that are going to come after their and give them a good old fashioned ass whooping because they have totally forgotten that we are brothers and sisters. <laughs> so with that, I'm complete. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. I always, uh, you know, I thought today it would be a really good day for me to not even drop one F bomb and Lina dropped one. Like, what the <laughs> heck? I know you drop them all the time, brother. I watch your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. But you know, it's the passion and compassion. Again, two words that relate yeah. to Jesus Christ. And, yeah. you know, the passion and compassion and the temple. Well, guess where the, the temple is right here. And there's another one here. And in between heaven. Okay, that's where we're going. And that's where you connect with God. So <laughs> why not? I, I'm not sure if last time we did this or not. But I have I have a version of the uh, Aramaic Lord's Prayer that I and it could be different than yours. I don't know. But and I added a few things to it. But if you don't mind, I'd like to end our little thing with that. Please bring it, bring it. Can I just say one quick little thing before you do that? You know, my heritage on, on this incarnation is Spanish. So I'm from the Dominican Republic, so I'm Latin. And so my first language is, is Spanish. Well, in Spanish, compassion is compasión, which means with passion. So you cannot be compassionate if you don't activate the passion. And passion comes from love. It comes from that fire within to express who we really truly are. So yeah, I love that you were saying that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to remember that one. I mean, you know, language is so cool. It's like, you know, it's time to say goodbye because we're going to end now or pretty quickly here. But, you know, that song that, uh, what's his name? Andreas Bocelli sings in Italian, Conte Partiro means I will leave with you. You know, so we got to watch our words sometimes, not that we have to watch them, but we got to pay attention to them because they are yeah. so powerful, right? Yes. Yes. But I won't, sing, I won't sing parte, Conte Partero. And of course, I'll let you have the last word at the end of this, but I want to say the prayer now, if you don't mind. And it goes like this. It's, it is very similar to the Lord's Prayer in a lot of ways, but also somewhat different. So... O cosmic breather of all radiance and vibration, soften the ground of our being and carve out a space within us where presence can abide. Fill us with creativity so that we may be empowered to bear the fruit of our mission. Let each of our actions bear fruit in accordance with our desire. My desire being abundance, sovereignty, health, love, and euphoria for all. Do not, oh, wait a minute. I gotta get back on track here. Fill me with creed. Oh, shoot. I'm not going to be able to get back on track. You know what? People have heard it before on my channel. I'll say it quite often. So I'm going to cut it off there, Lina. And uh, just say, I love you. And thank you very much for joining me today. And when we can all love each other, like you say, love those bankers, love those government politicians, say to them, look, it just move out of the way. We feel sorry for you. Just just leave, you know, we're ready to step in. And then we got to start stepping in and leading. That's it.
Yeah, yeah. This was absolutely beautiful. And I can't wait. We'll have to have a, a continuation to this conversation. There's so much to share um, because I love to get into more of, of the Course in Miracles. But yes, if I had to say one thing for everybody here, if you want to really activate that DNA, the only way to truly know that you are awake is when you can love all that is. And the only way to eradicate the crazy thinkers is to love them and call them back into their sanity by saying to them, brother, sister, I forgive what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. You're in crazy thoughts. And if we can start activating that frequency without even having to talk to them directly, we can do that as a collective is call those crazy thinkers back into sane thoughts. And our mind is powerful. They, they will not be able to deny that they are being loved. And in that, in that frequency, they will have to dissolve their crazy thoughts. They, they won't, it won't, that darkness won't be able to, to survive in a planet full of light. So thank you, brother, for knowing that with me. Thank you, Lina. I love you too. Talk soon. Bye-bye.